this godly school, we are studying, we are learning, and we are preparing for our final exam. In this meditation, we will consider the eight exams or sudden papers that we are preparing for right now. And take the time just to reflect on each one and how prepared you are, how you are being prepared for this final paper. The first. is the transformation of the vices. When I completely understand how these vices operate within me, I will have complete freedom. How they affect me, how they operate, and why they emerge what trigger brings a vice into my consciousness or controls my response. There is no amount of pledge or promise here. I must have the pure desire to be free from it. I must realize the futility of the addiction in order to see it clearly. Any trace of a vice that is still hidden within me will affect me, will come in a fierce form. Let me reflect on the five vices. Lust. Any traces of lust left, desire, competition, jealousy, it's wanting. greed and discontentment, creating a restlessness in the soul, wanting more of something. Attachment creates familiarity, subtle Controlling behavior. Being affected by others in any way. Anger. From the smallest impatience or irritation. to resentments. The ego. Ego makes me feel sensitive to criticism. Easily insulted. Using a prop such as how much I know, who I am, what I've done in my life, to make me feel valuable or powerful. Take a moment to reflect 
on your preparedness to face this final exam. the upheaval of the elements. We watch as Mother Nature now is cleaning away the surface damage that has been done, is seeking to restore and regenerate fertility to the land, to the air and water. Natural calamities are occurring at a much faster rate around the world. We have been touched by small bits of this, but then also just on a daily basis, the temperature changing in the water, rainfall levels changing, we see how slowly, slowly this is occurring. And what happens when there's upheaval of elements, fear, anxiety, and the story of a yogi coming to meet people in a room to share some wisdom, and an earthquake happening and everybody fleeing the room, seeking cover somewhere, and the yogi sat unmoved through the earthquake. One person remained in the room, amazed. This yogi's not leaving. Maybe he knows something. I won't leave either. And when it was finished, he asked the yogi, what? Why didn't you leave? Why didn't you run? And he said, I did run. I ran inside. Check myself now, my first instinct to run inside. This is the way to prepare for this final test.
bodily illness. Our bodies are aging and of course there are breakdowns. They require more attention, a little more care, a beautiful attitude. One of the final papers is the breakdown of the body. I rely on my body now and without even knowing how much I expect it to be strong or capable for me to do what I feel I must do. Some of the most powerful yogis have had their bodies not function to such a degree that their main service is mansa seva, service through the mind. That the reliance on doing a service transforms itself into complete and constant service through the mind. Check my willingness to serve in this way and my ability to face this test. The facilities our reliance on facilities from cell phones to cars to computers to washing machines our life is filled with a reliance on facilities and at one point they will break they will be unreliable. We will not have anything to rely on except our connection to Baba. This will guide me, tell me what to do, where to go, so I no longer will need in that moment any means of communication other than a subtle intellect connected to God. I check my relationship with facilities and imagine myself being without them and being fine.
from other souls, our families and friends, community, have been supportive. Some, maybe not. Always the possibility that one of the papers we face is resistance, criticism, active obstacle created by those we know in the world, and those we love. Settling our karmic accounts with everyone we know, forgiving them, forgiving ourselves, Our duty every day to emerge these souls in our mind and send out vibrations of purity and peace and happiness. Let me check the state of my relationships now. souls in the Brahmin family. We have been together with these souls throughout history in strong karmic accounts. Perhaps one of us has been a king and harmed another kingdom and then the revenge has come. All of these karmic accounts have to be settled. I keep as a name at this time that I do not want to create any further bondage. I settle all karmic accounts with the souls in this Brahmin family by having good wishes and pure feelings for them no matter what they have done.
disturbed or troubled souls. As souls leave their body in a state of distress, they seek a place to go. A strong and pure mind cannot be affected by this energy. A mind that is filled with Baba's energy is a safe place and a strong fortress. I make my mind strong by practicing soul consciousness and I give Sakash to all the souls of the world who are restless and peaceless, who are in sorrow and suffering, who are in pain and agony. These pure vibrations pacify them, bring them peace, and also protect my mind. criminal eyes. In this world, more and more, people attempt to take pleasure from sense gratification. And souls try and take things from each other. This is impurity and lust within them makes them look outwards. Criminal eyes, eyes that look at one with desire to take something. This will intensify in the final scenes. But of course, my effort is to become 100% pure. Mama was so pure and so powerful that no one could look at her with lustful vision. My purity will be and is becoming so strong. I have no desire to see bodies. I have none of this energy in me. And this protects me from any vision of any soul in a negative or impure way. <laughs> 